from the crypt. Damn you, Marcel! I told you they wanted violence, not violins. Good help is so hard to find, isn't it, kiddies? Want a little more champagne? <laughs> I hope you're hungry for tonight's murderous menu. It concerns a man who's discovered that the fastest way to a woman's heart is with a pickaxe. I call this tasty little horror d'oeuvre none but the lonely heart. Now that's what I call a happy ending. I had a feeling Effie would win Howard's heart, not to mention his spleen, his kidneys, and his gallbladder. <laughs> so, will there be anything else? Mmm. I love a ghoul who gives you head and then lets you keep it. when that happens. You didn't know your old friend the Crypt Keeper was the boo-it-yourself type, did you? I'm actually pretty handy with my little ghoul box. Here's a bookshelf I just finished for my library. Over there's a stand I made for my new Big Scream TV. And here's something else I've been working on. It's a nasty nugget about an unpleasant young man in the medicine biz who's about to get a dose of his own. I call tonight's tale, This'll Kill Ya. How about that, George? Talk about connecting with your friends. There, finished. So what do you think, kiddies? Beautiful, isn't it? I've always wanted a swing set. Just a little something for when I'm hanging out watching the news. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> now that's what I call well hung. <laughs> Poison girls, are you ready to rock and roll? Good. Then slip into your gore jacket and prepare to sing along. Can't carry a tomb? That's okay. I'm just playing by ear myself. <laughs> Tonight's terror tune concerns a young headbanger who lets a woman get a little too far under his skin. I call this decomposition on a dead man's chest. Well, Mick might have been the group's guitarist, but Danny turned out to be the real axe man. <laughs> Still, you've got to like where the band is going. Any day now, they'll be appearing on America's Chop 40. <laughs> So, till next time, kiddies, me and my gorage band have got a jam. You know what they say, you're never too cold to rock and roll. It was another one of those hot L.A. days. Things were about to get interesting when she walked in. Her name was Samantha, and she was beautiful. A regular corpus delecti, with a great chest. Cavity, that is. Something in her socket said beware. Must have been the way they said hello to me. So, sweetheart, you say your husband's been cheating on you with another ghoul? That it? Well, I'll be glad to hear your story. But first, I've got a tawdry tale of my own to tell. 
It's about a couple of scam artists who want to make a killing, provided they don't kill each other first. I call it seance. Well, maybe Al and Benny will finally get it together now. After all, two dirds are better than one. As for Sham, it turned out she was right. Her husband was cheating on her with a zombie he'd met on a business trip out to the ghost. In the end, I decided to let Sam handle things her own way. Go ahead. Slay it again, Sham. <laughs> Seven. Uh, hello, kitties. What's the new? <laughs> I was just in the middle of my deadly dozen. First I do a few pull-ups, then a few jumping hacks, and then I like to finish with a little die impact aerobics. <laughs> Eight. I'm getting in shape for tonight's tale. It's about an ambitious young actress who's looking for her big break. Will she make it? Only her hairdresser knows for sure. <laughs> I call this dismal drama Beauty Rest. business a little hard to swallow. I call this adventure in fine dying what's cooking. I suppose it's a little too late for Gaston to save face. Talk about a flesh in the pan. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you butcher money where your mouth is. <laughs> As for me, kiddies, I say it's time for taps. Mm. Till next time, restaurateur in peace. You see what I mean, Doc? It's, it's just like that nightmare I told you about. The one I keep having where I'm petting Bambi. You gotta help me, Doc. I'm losing my mind. I can't seem to take a joke anymore. I mean a choke. I mean, it's like the man in tonight's tale. He's a head shrinker who's about to undergo a little final analysis of his own in a paranoid parable I call. The new arrival. You'll be happy to know that Dr. Getz did get another radio show, though he was much more careful this time about screaming his calls. <laughs> I'm feeling so much better. You were right, Doc. A little smotherly love was all I needed. 
So till next time, kiddies, I'm sending my shrink to join the others. You know what they say, the morgue, the merrier. <laughs> Howdy, Ilgram. Uh -huh. It's Guy Noon. And you know what that means, don't you? Means it's time for a gun fright at the OK Goral. <laughs> Cause this tomb ain't big enough for the both of us. Which brings me to tonight's tale. It's about a gunslinger who's about to ride into his last roundup. I call this prairie poison... Showdown. Talk about a sick shooter. Who'd have thought being a cowboy could stir up so many bad feelings? <laughs> well, kitties, I've got to go. There's a ghoul rush on, you know. Hmm, I wonder. Who was that mashed man? Stella! Stella! Oh, hello, plague goers. I was just rehearsing with my little theater group. I just love the slime light. For tonight's dreary drama, I thought we'd try an experimental piece about a retired drag racer who's afraid of getting to the finished line a little sooner than he wants. I call this nasty nugget. King of the Road. Well, that certainly gives new meaning to the term burn rubber. <laughs> As for me, I've got to get back to work. The group has decided to do something classical. We're trying to choose between a Midsummer Night's Scream and Ghoulius Caesar. <laughs> Care to watch from hack stage? <laughs> you know what they say, kiddies. The sleigh's the thing. <laughs> City life got you down, kiddies. Looking for a home on Derange? Well, look no further, because I got exactly what you want. It's a charming tomb with a view. Think of it as your own little house on the scary. <laughs> You're not interested? What's the matter? Afraid you can't get a morgue edge? Oh well, that's exactly how the woman in tonight's tortured tale feels. She's upset because there's a killer loose in her neighborhood. In a putrid property, I call. Maniac at large. Well, kiddies, I guess that's knife in the big city for you. <laughs> Boy, do I feel sorry for Margaret. Looks like it's just one dead-end job after another. <laughs> You'll be happy to know that I made a sale. The negotiations were fierce. But after I threw in a couple of acres, the rest was easy. <laughs> there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, hello, kitties. Tonight's coffin caper is so crammed with ghastly greed, sickening sex, and vomitous violence that parental guidance is advised. So, guide your parents out of the room so we can have some fun! <laughs> this tale concerns a gambling man with a bad case of double vision who's about to hit the hackpot. I call this twin helping of horror... Split personality. I 
Guess old venal Vic thought he could double his fun and his bank account. Too bad he was only half right. Oh well, it just proves the old saying. Behind every bad man, there's two women. With a chainsaw! <laughs> so, kitties, care for a little meme of chance? Deads I win, tails you ooze! <laughs> yes, that's better. Oh, hello, boars and ghouls. I hope you'll excuse me if I don't get up. I'm a little stiff today. Then again, I'm a little stiff every day. <laughs> Actually, I twisted my neck playing croak A. But it wasn't hurting the way I thought it should, so I called my Cairo Hactor. Of course, some people look elsewhere for their pain. Like the old man in tonight's terror tale. His idea of an antibiotic was to marry a younger woman. <laughs> Oh, this plasma play strung along. Well, Coco may have been the puppet, but in the end, Joseph was the one who paid for marionette. <laughs> As for me, kitties, it seems my pain in the neck was more serious than I thought. But I'm almost finished with my scarapy. <laughs> One more adjustment, and I'll be out of here. Anytime you're ready, Bones. <laughs> now that's what I call pain in full. <laughs> this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. And this is your brain after watching Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> Evening, creep. We interrupt your regularly scheduled television program to bring you a bit of culture. That's right, kiddies. Tonight, instead of rotting your grave matter, I'm going to improve it with a tasteful tale about someone who just can't fright the feeling. I call it Werewolf Concerto. Poor Lokai. Thought he was starring in La Boheme. Turned out he was second lead in Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> I hope you're not cultured out, kitties. Because the next part of our program is a little potty die I've been working on. I hope you like the goreography. Whenever you're ready, Isadora. Mmm. I guess it's back to the corpse du ballet for her. <laughs> Glad you could drop in, kill seekers. Don't worry about me. It only hurts when I laugh. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, that was good. It's even better than hang gliding. <laughs> of course, some folks would rather keep their feet on terra firma, like the people in tonight's putrid piece. They're spending a nice quiet weekend in the woods, going hack to nature. <laughs> I call this fetid fable, Curiosity Killed. That Cynthia's a real shrieking violet, wouldn't you say, kiddies? A regular afterlife of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know I was a boar scout, did you? Well, I am. My horticulture skeret badge requires me to plant crocuses. Hmm, a shame, really. 
I'd much rather plant diebreds. 